these satires are holding for laughter, they're going to be waiting a long time. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst scenes in parody movies. Hasta la vista, baby. Yippee-ki-yay. Oh, damn it. I don't have a catchphrase. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most awkward, cringe-inducing, overly offensive, gross, or just plain unfunny scenes featured in parody films. A whole wing? Extra crispy? God damn! Number 10. Inappropriate Indiana Jones. Disaster Movie. Indiana Jones? Disaster Movie follows the immature Will as he fights off pop culture references while trying to prevent the apocalypse. I am Iron Man. After discovering he can save the world by placing a crystal skull on an altar, he meets Indiana Jones. Jones explains that he is Will's father before feeling up his son's girlfriend. Thanks, son. That's right. I'm your father. Between the assault being played for laughs and jokes about how promiscuous Will's mother was, the scene comes off as sexist and cringeworthy. But when Jones dies shortly after his introduction, the whole sequence becomes pointless. We'd rather watch the critically panned Indiana Jones in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull before sitting through this disastrous scene again. <laughs> Number 9. Too Many Kicks. Meet the Spartans. Leonidas. Ryan Seacrest. When King Leonidas kicked an enemy messenger into a pit in 300, an iconic scene was born. This is Sparta! But when Meet the Spartans parodied the epic moment, the audience fell into a hole of unfunny comedy. After imitation Leonidas kicks his enemies into a pit, a Britney Spears caricature shows up and is knocked in too. Spears' appearance is followed by a cheap gay joke about singer Sanjaya. I'm not gay a cowardly Ryan Seacrest, and an unoriginal bit about the American Idol judges. In fact, I've seen better kicks from a geriatric donkey, oh. and I'm not talking about you, Paula. <laughs> These random cameos fall flat and make the joke drag on way longer than necessary. The editors should have thrown this tired scene into a pit. <laughs> Number 8. Harry Potter and the Horrible Parody – Epic Movie Welcome! My name is Harry Potter. Creators Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer have been responsible for our entire list so far. They'll go three for three with a scene from their fantasy satire, Epic Movie. When the main characters discover a certain magical school, they meet a perverted Harry Potter, a pregnant Hermione, and a balding Ron with no distinct personality. Greetings. Outside of Harry's inappropriate groping, the main problem here is that the writers don't even try to make fun of the beloved characters. Instead, Harry and friends are replaced with creepy and offensive stereotypes. There are tons of clever Potter parodies. Try any of those before suffering through this uninspired writing. Come on, Peter! Stop being such a little Nancy boy! Number 7. A Terrible Celebrity Team-Up – Scary Movie 4 oh. <sighs> Help! Help! Am I dead? Scary Movie 4 opens with a painful parody of the Saw franchise. Basketball star Shaquille O'Neal and talk show host Dr. Phil are stuck in a deadly trap and given two minutes to escape. Dr. Phil? What the hell's going on? I don't know! We witness the two celebs playing bizarre caricatures of themselves while exchanging tame insults about their respective careers and character flaws. None of the jokes in the scene land due to Shaq and Dr. Phil's lack of on-screen chemistry, their hammy acting, and the over-the-top physical comedy. Were the writers forced to create a script around whatever celebrities they could get? That's the only way to explain this baffling on-screen pairing. Why can't I fix anyone? I'm so dumb and worthless! Mama was right! Mama was right! Hey, hey, hey! Number 6. Immature Names – The Starving Games Nice. Looks like the odds just got better for me then. My balls! The odds were not in the audience's favor when Friedberg and Seltzer reunited for 2013's The Starving Games. In one of the worst scenes, the citizens of District 12 wait for their representative, F-Off, 
to select two children to compete in a battle to the death. When she reaches into the bowl of children's names, she keeps pulling out fake monikers like Phil Mahooters and Dingleberry. Dingleberry! The wordplay is supposed to be funny, but the joke is too juvenile to earn anything but groans. As final proof that this comedic bit is bad, F Off criticizes the joke during the movie. You won't be laughing when two of you are picked and thrown into the arena for your most certain deaths. Number 5. Jersey Shore Reference – Vampires Suck The Twilight movies have been criticized for their melodrama, romance, and cheesy lines. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. This Vampires Suck scene ignored all those flaws in favor of a weak pop culture reference. Who are they? Oh, those are the Sullens. When main character Becca is being told about the various students in her new school, she spots Edward Sullen. Who's that? Snooky, JWoww, DJ Polly D. No, not the douchebags from the Jersey Shore. The camera pans over to reveal that he's standing behind a cast of Jersey Shore impersonators. Although their cameo lasts less than 10 seconds, it feels like a nonsensical waste of time. The movie does nothing with the cast except point in their direction and expect us to laugh for recognizing them. It is the epitome of lazy writing. Favorite activity, searching for soul which has been cast into eternal damnation. Number four, Pimp My Ride Montage, date movie. Allison Hannigan was somehow convinced to wear a fat suit to play Julia in Friedberg and Seltzer's date movie. After Julia asks a love doctor for romantic advice, she is taken to a car garage for a makeover. We get a disgusting montage of mechanics waxing Julia's back, buffing her toenails, and literally sucking mayonnaise out of her. The aggressively insulting Pimp My Ride parody also features a pointless Star Wars joke and awkward camera shots that linger for way too long. We know to expect offensive, excessive, and unfunny writing from Friedberg and Seltzer, but it's still astounding to see how low they can go. Number 3. The Never Ending Fart – Extreme Movie Since Extreme Movie is entirely composed of sketches from different writers, the tone and humor are inconsistent from scene to scene. But there was one vignette that stank more than the rest. In the scene, a young woman passes gas while making out. After her partner insists it's okay, she continues to fart for 40 uninterrupted seconds. The young woman's flatulence goes from gross to unrealistic, but never manages to be funny. When she's finished cutting the cheese, her partner comments it was nasty. The scene then ends so abruptly that it feels like the movie itself wanted to move on from this toilet humor. <laughs> Number 2. Blackface Makeover – Dance Flick Anyway, come on, let's go. Well, Just get in, hurry up, hurry up! Although Dance Flick parodies a wide selection of movies, it takes a lot of its inspiration from Save the Last Dance. In both movies, the Caucasian main character has an African-American friend that gives them a quick makeover in a car. However, Dance Flick crosses the line when the Caucasian Megan emerges from the car in blackface. Her shocking makeup is made worse when she changes her voice and mannerisms to sound like she's from the hood. What a do, shorty! <laughs> this jarring scene may have been intended for comedy, but it's hard to find humor when historically troubling makeup is used as a cheap throwaway gag. Before we boo our top pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. God, I knew I should have taken those stupid shrimp tacos from that Guadalajara street under last night. Number one, the abusive Mrs. Robinson, Fifty Shades of Black. Um, I, I thought I was supposed to be here for music lessons. Fifty Shades of Black constantly toes the line between risque and flat-out offensive. Although the scene where characters are served meals based on their race is extremely cringeworthy, Christian Black's backstory is much worse. One, two, three, oh. Oh. Do you know why I hit you in the head with that tambourine, Black? Black explains that his BDSM lifestyle started with his piano teacher, Mrs. Robinson. 
We then flash back to Mrs. Robinson showing a 16-year-old black how to have sex. When he messes up, Mrs. Robinson ridicules him with insults and physical harm. At the scene's conclusion, it's revealed that more boys are waiting for her lessons. <laughs> Willie, Willie, you're up next. The problem here is simple. Physical, emotional, and child abuse are not funny. And neither is this scene. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.